March 6, 1945. The bloody Battle of Iwo Jima has just ended, showing the Americans how costly it is going to be to take every Japanese island from now on. With little time to digest what has happened in this battle, the Americans prepare to storm Okinawa, where they will fight in one of their worst battles of all of World War II. Having cornered the Japanese on their original islands, and having destroyed most of their fleet, the Americans prepare for one of their final battles in the Pacific. In his memory remain the conquest of Saipan or Iwo Jima, in which the Japanese have gradually perfected their defensive tactics. The American General Simon Bolivar Buckner is the commander in charge of the operation to conquer Okinawa, known as Operation Iceberg. Under his control he has seven U.S. divisions, being the 1st, 2nd, and 6th Marines, and the 7th, 27th, 77th and 96th Infantry Divisions. In total, all his forces add up to about 180,000 troops. On the other hand, the Japanese have some 120,000 soldiers on the island, along with 24,000 militiamen and the rest of the civilian population who will not surrender under any circumstances. Despite having a greater number of troops, as well as total control of the sky and the sea, General Simon Bolivar knows that it will not be easy to gain control of the island, and that a very tough battle awaits him. So much so, that he himself would die during the battle. Although the Japanese had lost very important islands such as Iwo Jima or Saipan, which allowed the Americans to bomb Japan with planes that took off from these islands, losing the island of Okinawa was something they could not afford. Basically, it was the key island from which the future land invasion on Japan would be launched. Thus, the Japanese had been fortifying the island for months, and building all kinds of defenses. The Japanese General Mitsuru Ushijima, ordered to dig all kinds of underground tunnels as the main axis of his defense, and located most of his troops in the center and south of the island. This is because the north of the island is quite hilly and no airfield can be built, but the center and south are flatter. The battle for Okinawa began on March 25th when the U.S. Navy began to open fire on the island, causing hell for the Japanese. The American objective, as is evident, was to destroy as many Japanese defenses as possible, as well as eliminate as many Japanese soldiers as possible, before beginning the landing of troops. The next day, ground operations began on small islands to the west of Okinawa, where the U.S. Navy was intended to be based and defended while fighting on the main island continued. Let us remember that on this date the kamikaze attacks had already begun a long time ago, and the Americans feared that in this fierce battle for Okinawa, the Japanese would send everything they had available against them. It took the Americans about five days to take this small archipelago, after which, on April 1st, they were able to begin the assault on Okinawa. This landing took place in central Okinawa, and during that first day, the Americans encountered virtually no resistance. Thus, they advanced towards the center of the island and took a series of airfields that were in the area, believing that their Japanese enemy was totally defeated and that they had already obtained victory. 60,000 men managed to disembark during that first day without any kind of difficulty, being able to cut the island in those first days. The American general did not expect this success to come so quickly, and he gave orders to launch the second phase of the operation, which consisted of conquering the south and north of the island. The mission to attack the north fell to the 6th Marine Division, which was able to make its way through that mountainous area, and was able to reach the northern tip of Okinawa on April 13. Although later there was an attack by Japanese soldiers who had been isolated in the area, the Americans took effective control of the northern part of the island in the first two weeks of combat. However, in the south, the situation was very different. In any case, before we begin to analyze the heavy fighting that took place in the south, we have to point out the great naval battle that took place during these first days of fighting on Okinawa. This was known as Operation Tengo, in which the Japanese sent their star battleship, the Yamato, into combat in a desperate attempt to expel the Americans from around Okinawa. This was undoubtedly a suicide mission in which the Japanese sent the Yamato along with nine other warships. Unfortunately for them, 
This naval force was intercepted long before it could reach Okinawa and was attacked by hundreds of American planes and a few submarines, sinking the Yamato and several Japanese warships. With this, the last hope of the Okinawan defenders disappeared completely. After this small paragraph, let's return to the fighting that was taking place on the island. Late in that first week of April, the U.S. 7th and 96th Infantry Divisions began their attack in a southerly direction, now encountering strong Japanese defenses. After heavy fighting, the Americans were able to advance a few kilometers and overcome this first defensive ring, but they suffered some 1,500 casualties in just a couple of days of combat. It was at this moment that they realized the difficult task ahead of them. Little by little the days went by, and the American soldiers found themselves involved in a multitude of ambushes and traps that the Japanese had prepared. After months of preparation, the Japanese had created killing zones in which the Americans suffered thousands of casualties. The only thing the American side had going for it was that it could bombard these Japanese defenses with its naval artillery, but since the Japanese were well entrenched in underground caves, this bombardment did not have the desired effect. Thus, the flamethrower became another good ally of the U.S. troops. In an attempt to slow the American advance, the Japanese mounted a series of night attacks during the night of April 12, hoping to ruin their enemy's preparations for the next day. Like the vast majority of these attacks, the result was a massive massacre for the Japanese. On April 19, the American assault continued and they again attacked the Japanese positions. The island's barely six kilometers wide makes it a real bottleneck for the attacking troops who are forced to attack head-on over and over again. This assault on the Japanese defensive line called Kakazu ended with some 700 casualties for the Americans and more than 20 tanks lost, without achieving any significant advance. Because they could not outflank them in any way, the only thing the Americans could do was make the Japanese believe that they were going to land south of the island, with the objective that the Japanese kept a large number of their troops to the south, and did not send them to the north. Thus, the U.S. attack continued until the end of April, being able to advance little by little towards the south of the island. Faced with this situation, the Japanese General Mitsuru organized a series of counterattacks, in which he even considered disembarking behind the American lines. For this, he intended to use the few naval means and artillery that he had at his disposal. Ultimately, the Japanese general's plan failed. Because the Americans continued advancing south, Mitsuru had no choice but to send most of his troops north, because as his enemy advanced, the island widened more. The result of this movement was intense battles during the first weeks of May in which both sides suffered thousands of casualties. However, while the Americans could afford them, this was not the case for the Japanese who had no chance of receiving reinforcements or supplies, so their fighting capacity was reduced by the day. To aggravate the situation, on May 11, the Japanese carried out a large kamikaze attack against the U.S. fleet that surrounded Okinawa, damaging numerous ships including the famous Enterprise aircraft carrier that he had to withdraw from there due to the damage caused by the Japanese planes. At the end of that month of May, the situation on the island continued to get complicated due to the heavy monsoon rains, which turned the disputed hills and roads into a large swamp that made all fighting difficult. The land advance began to resemble a World War I battlefield, as troops became bogged down in mud and flooded roads prevented progress and largely the evacuation of wounded to the rear. The troops lived in a rain-soaked field, part garbage dump and part graveyard, with bodies left to die in every corner. Despite everything, on May 27 the city of Naha, which was the largest on the island, fell into American hands. Although they expected stiff resistance and a large civilian presence, the U.S. troops found the city virtually deserted. For those dates, the situation for the Japanese was desperate, and they had begun a retreat to the south of the island, with the sole objective of resisting as long as possible. The bloodiest battles in Okinawa were about to arrive. By the beginning of June, the Japanese forces were divided into two, positioning themselves to the south and southeast of the island. This isolated southeastern redoubt came under both land and amphibious attack by the 6th Marine Division, which was able to annihilate the Japanese defenders by mid-June. 
It should be noted that it was at this time that the many Japanese began to commit suicide inside their tunnels because they considered that all was lost. A few days later, the American General Simon Bolivar himself died while he was in an outpost supervising the advance of his troops, as a result of a Japanese artillery attack. With the objective of finishing eliminating the Japanese resistance that still remained to the south of the island, the Americans began a last operation on June 23 that took them a week to conclude, ending the Battle of Okinawa. After counting the casualties, the Americans saw that this was their bloodiest battle to date on the Pacific Front, with a total of 80,000 casualties between dead, wounded, and soldiers who went mad. Additionally, they lost almost 800 aircraft, along with 36 ships being sunk and another 300 being damaged. The Japanese for their part suffered some 110,000 military casualties, along with another 100,000 civilians. To this, we must also count the casualties of the naval combats in which we can include the Yamato. On the other hand, the consequences of this battle are very important. First, it made it clear to the Americans how expensive a complete invasion of Japan would be for them, since they would undoubtedly have to assume hundreds of thousands of casualties. Thus, many justify the launch of the atomic bomb as a consequence of the large number of casualties in this battle, although I personally lean more towards the position that the bombs were dropped mainly as a warning to the Soviet Union. In any case, it is clear that everything adds up. But what do you think, what do you think of these desperate battles that caused hundreds of thousands of casualties, when Japan had not had any chance of winning the war for a long time. Do you think that this massacre in Okinawa was the reason for the drop of the two atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki two months later? We recently uploaded a program analyzing another of the fiercest battles in the Pacific, this being Saipan, which I leave in the description in case you haven't seen it yet. Without a doubt, it was there that there was a before and after in the way of defending the islands. And so far this today's program, which I hope you have found interesting. Thank you all for being part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.